And we're alive. Yet again. I've been alive. I've been alive for a while. At least a year. Me too. Me too I think so. But at least uh, it seems to work now. And we are on schedule, finally. Aren't we? <laughs> yes, yes, we're right on time. Right on time. We are here for the top 10 most anticipated uh, Essence Spiel 2018 releases, games, whatever. We're here for Essen. So this, this is the topic for today. So it's not only the top 10. We Let's talk a little bit about Essen as well. At least uh, I have some experience. I can compare it to Jenkins a little bit and so on. So first of all, if we're going to talk about Essen, um, I won't be there. As I already told in one of the updates on the channel, I won't be in Essen this year. I know. I've been there many years. I, yes, I had to skip this one uh, due to some things, but it's all right. I don't have to go every year. Uh, I will go there next year, most likely. So who knows? Yeah. And you've never been there, Kyle. I've never been there, and who knows if I'll ever go. It's, <laughs> it's far away, and October is a hard month for me. It's, it is. It's a busy month at work. And so, I don't know. Someday I'd love to go there. I love going to Europe anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's just October is not the best time for that for me. Yeah. Which makes me sad, but I do a lot of other things. <laughs> yeah. But maybe one year you'll be able to come to, to Essen as well. Because uh, this convention is very different from Gen Con. Jenkins has open spaces for gaming, uh, a lot of them huge spaces. But um, Essen is is it is like a game fair uh, where you have a ton of booths, different publishers, a ton of new games coming out. Uh, some games that came out in Jenkins or, or came out in September, but they're not widely distributed yet. For example, uh, lots of uh, Korean, Taiwanese, Chinese, Japanese, whatever like. All the Asian games as well. All the Asian Easy market games. is there. <laughs> Easy games. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there are a ton of releases, and it's all about <laughs> going there, demoing, and buying games. It's it's a game fair. Uh, if you look at the convention and to play games, you can play at the, at the hotel, but I don't know. Like, the hotels were full before the previous convention ended, previous Essen ended, so when I tried to book a uh, Motel 1. Uh, and um, I know what people are going uh, there, like to, to different, to what hotels they're going. So I, yeah, I, I don't know if this year I wanted, if I was thinking about going, I wanted to try a new hotel. Not I wanted to try, but it was my almost only option. Uh, to, <laughs> get to get that hotel, but uh, I don't know what what would be the gaming space there. But uh, in Motel One, at least, you had some gaming space, and people were gaming all the time. And yeah, but you would be like so tired from uh, all the roaming around because you have like huge holes, a ton of holes. It's it's just overwhelming. It's much more than Gen Con, but it's extremely more exciting than Gen Con. Jenkins, yeah, cool. Essen, amazing. So that's yeah, that's for well, me. Someday I might make the make the trip, but you know, there's another Eurovision or European convention that I go to. So that's what? Oh, Euro Eurovision, Eurovision. <laughs> convention, Eurovision <laughs> convention. Yeah, true that. <laughs> yeah, so I cannot really talk about what would I expect from from Essen this year. So, I expect to be at work the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> true that for me as well. But at least I don't know if they expanded the holes even further. I think they have. They will be even bigger this year. And yeah, I don't know what new innovations. I didn't look into that. What new innovations they will are going to have because at some point they was it two years ago that they included the um, sending games home. The, the no? uh, post office booth where you could send all the games home. That that was ex like I mean, 
that wasn't cheap. I sent like um, 50 something cent kilos of games and all that. Yes, but um, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, at, at least I could get all the games home and not deal with extra suitcases, which, which would be more expensive than just sending these games home. It just you could always not time. buy them. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that. That didn't go that well because, as as I tell you, Essen is much bigger regarding publishers and games and releases last year at least. This year, when I looked at this year's list, it's maybe because I just cooled down on having new games all the time and I was already in Gen Con, for example. So I got some of the new games and I I get some I got some review copies and some Kickstarter copies as well so i kind of cooled down on 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 the on the new games a little bit i don't know i did i didn't feel like extremely excited about the releases this year the uh, uh the essen releases last year it wasn't like lots of choices this year if, if i would go there i wouldn't buy that many games as last year because i just didn't see that much mm. I, I looked at the list. I mean, I had kind of the same problem in that lots of these were either at Gen Con already or I've gotten them through a Kickstarter or I've already ordered them from the publisher for something else. So they don't really feel like they're new. Uh, and and that's, that's sort of made it a little bit more difficult to, to make a list of things I'm excited about that are unique to the Essence Fair. But, you know, there seems, I mean, there's plenty of things that interest me. And... Yeah. I'm sure I would buy plenty if I were to go there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, also also one thing is that I kind of narrowed down my new kind of a buy list uh, to... Because first of all, I have this limitation in my collection. Secondly, I have quite a few games that are unplayed on my shelf and review copies that I need to review and play anyway. So a lot going on. But I also narrow it down to several categories um, that I'm more interested in recently. For example, uh, one of the categories is escape room games. So if there is a new escape room game, I'm always excited about that one. Then adventure, exploration games, cooperative games, something about like uh, in a vibe of time stories or seventh continent, stuff like that. You know, storytelling games, all of that thing. I would be extremely be I would be extremely interested. Then the third category is um, economic games, and I'm looking forward to midweight economy games. Yeah, I'm. I'm I started realizing that I I really like all the economic games. Also, for example, it's, it's even Cyclades. I really like the aspect of bidding, which is kind of economy. You're spending resources, which is money, on bidding on different gods. You're trying to you know manipulate the market, kind of. So, and you're spending all the resources. But, I mean, I'm into economy games recently. I have some heavier ones yet and played, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking for more economy games. Uh, and fourth category is unique games. Not mechanically unique. I mean, like, they can be, but also thematically something different, different theme. So... That's that. Well, I mean, I, 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 if I were to look at the, when I looked at what what's coming out, I, um, I was most excited about lots of the expansions that are coming. There's lots of expansions coming for games that I already like, and and so that that was perhaps even more exciting. But there's, I don't know, there's there's plenty of new stuff that's coming that seems interesting yeah. enough to me. Yeah. I compiled a list of like I had a list of twenty, let's say twenty seven, even twenty six because mm -hmm. I looked at some. Uh, I think twenty six because one of them was on Kickstarter, it was a demo. And out of those twenty six games, kind of some of these were like I don't know. Uh, I just marked them down as kind of interested. Yeah, but I found fifteen of them to be. You know, interesting. What what I would okay. look into maybe buy. Yeah, I I got to about twenty, and then I cold it down to a list of ten just for this. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I would certainly buy all of them if I were there because I just know myself, and so I'm not going to lie and pretend that I wouldn't. 
But <laughs> I mean, you've seen me in action at a game show. Uh, yeah. I tend to, uh, I tend to uh, just buy without thinking, unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> so, I, but I found I found a few that I'm. So there's the number one on my list is something I'm genuinely excited for. It's something that as soon as I heard about it watched a couple of videos about it, I was, I mean, I knew it would be something that I would be really interested in. Um, the rest are things, one of them I tried at Gen Con, but it wasn't there for, for purchase yet. Uh, you know, I, but I, I, it's a good list. I just, the one thing I noticed as I was doing this one is there were a whole lot more things I was not interested in than things that I was. Whereas with the Gen Con list, I think I found lots of things that I was kind of undecided on. I guess I had, there's more that I got, you know, that when you go into the list, there's that red box. I was able to use that a lot more with this one, but maybe that's just because there were more titles to look at. Hmm. So, Yeah, there was like 1,030 titles right now. But like like, yep. It's the beginning of October, which means that mm -hmm. uh, some at some point somebody is going to you know, release a new statement about a new game coming out in this, you know? Yeah. There are still games coming in to that list as well. Yeah, so, and then some of them are like you know, like that River game from Days of Wonder, you know, that we played at Gen Con. Yeah, I would be really excited if we hadn't played the demo at Gen Con, and now I'm just yes. like, okay, that might be fine. You know, it's, so I, it, it's there were lots of things like that that I've already had some experience with, and then that made my ardor cool a little bit. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, but uh, I think let's let's just go to to our top ten picks, and not okay. Uh, stretch uh, the video too much. I'm sorry. I was looking at the chat as well. Um, I have a second I computer now for that, so uh, <laughs> got more advanced this time. So I don't have to do it from one computer and switch between the screens. Um, but. <laughs> All right, so 10 games, mm -hmm. 10 games. And I would say my top two, or, or let's say my top three games are something I'm really excited about. And the rest is like mildly excited. I mean, like, yeah, I would definitely look into that. But they have some, right. I have some cool themes there. So let's start with my number 10. Okay. My number 10 is... Uh, Papua, Papua, Papua. I don't know. It's, it's from Dever. Uh, it's um, the Pedro Soto is the uh, is the artist and the designers are Javier Garcia, I think, and Diego Ibanez, something like that. So it's it's in like an auction bidding and vertical placement dice rolling game. So you roll the dice, you allocate them to different uh, spaces, uh, like. Let's say it says here hot logistics expeditions funding blah 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 and you're trying to get the different resources and trying to fund your expeditions and trying to collect uh, new discoveries through this kind of a bidding me mechanism as well so it looks uh, the box looks really cool um the board looks uh, okay but it has this kind of a you know uh, economy aspect as I understand, and it has this uh, cool theme of this 19th century uh, expedition to uh, what was the um, the location name? I don't remember exactly. Oh, uh, New Guinea. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's why New I'm Guinea? interested in this. G New Guinea, Gu Guinea, something like that. Guinea is, I think, how 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 we would pronounce it over here, but you know. Guinea or something like that is in Estonian, Russian, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's that's my number ten, Papua. I don't All know right. if I heard about that one. I had not. I mean, that one passed me by. So I, I that's something I know little about. Um, looking at my number ten, my number ten is the next. Every year, one of these comes out at Essen, and this is the next one. This is Keyflow. Oh, mm -hmm. it's from uh, Richard Breeze and. Uh, I really love Key Flower. I like Keeper. I like Key Market. I like Key Harvest. I've enjoyed most of the games. The only one I haven't really enjoyed was Key to the City London, which was the same as Key Flower, but worse. Um, 
Uh, but Key Flow looks really interesting. Don't know a whole lot about it, but I always I always look forward to these games. They all kind of look the same. So, you know, if, if you the, the moment you saw it, you would know it was part of the series. He's done a, a great job keeping that keeping that integrity there but it, it just looks like a lot of fun and i'm excited for it so i i look forward to trying key flow yeah i all those key series games they don't look as exciting to me <laughs> but it, look, it looks like a little bit of that clemens franz art you know which i well, uh, they... which i despise <clears throat> uh yeah but sorry. you know i I like the art. I, I like. I think it's. It's. I think it's Richard Breeze's sister who does the art, and I've liked her art. You know, there's lots of little surprises in the cards and on the tiles, and it's it's lovingly done. The only exception is I hated the art on Inherit the Earth or Inhabit the Earth, where I think I showed you that one. That's the one with the with the animals on the cover that look like they've had oh, yeah. too much coffee. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my god. So oh my god. She does great at this sort of you know rural countryside along the river artwork. But I, I don't know that she's all that great at drawing just straight animals. So anyway, I like the art. I like the way that it looks. The graphic design is usually pretty good. And if you know one, you can usually figure out the other without a whole lot of extra rules. I mean, they're very different, but but I, I they just go together. It's a good series, and I always look forward to the new entry. Yeah. All right. It's your number 10. Let's go to that number That is my nine. number 10. All right. Top. My number nine is a card game, but you use cards. As I understand, you use cards as tiles, and it's uh, or you don't use them as tiles. I don't know. Anyway, um, well, that covers it, both of the options. It's Solenia. The cover looks really cool. I like the cover, Solenia. It's uh, it's uh, the Vincent Dutre is the artist, so the art is great. And it's Pearl Games and Sebastian Jordin. Jordin, the one who made Deus. So, yeah, I like his stuff. So, yeah, I, I kind of like his kind of approach to, because he's the, the French French approach to Euro games. So I'm interested. I had some problems with Deus and so on, but um, I'm still looking forward to, to this one, Solenia. Uh, this one is uh, basically you are putting those, putting down those cards, as I understand. And you're trying to travel through those cards, collecting resources and delivering those resources to the people around there, whatever. You have this kind of a century, century's best mission over there and so on. So basically it's, it's, uh, it says here, a card game hand management module board. So you use different cards uh, and you play different <coughs> rounds. So uh, sounds very simple. You get the resources or you deliver resources as that. But looks really cool. I, I like the looks and I, I like how it's described. I mean, it's probably very simple and something I can play with non-gamers or, or my colleagues from work who are not into games that much. I'm looking into those kinds of games as well right now. What would fit uh, different groups? Uh, and for example, my group of uh, beginners. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So All right. I, when... Another one I know very little about, but I think we're going to have very little overlap. Although I, I suspect I know what some of your your top games are. Um, <laughs> I, I really can't say much about it because I hadn't really looked at it. Although I I do love Deus. All component and spelling issues aside, mm -hmm. um, so it's certainly one to watch. Um, by the way, I'm I'm posting all the all, all my at least uh, these choices to chat as well. The links to board game geeks, so you can oh, click on them and I... see them right away. Okay. You, know, you, you don't have to; you can do it later. But for the other folks who will be watching, watching, so yeah, that's okay. something you can do. Well, maybe I'll do that while you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So my number nine. You know, every year I I kind of glom on to the weird theme game in Essen. <laughs> there was that yeah. one about uh, soiling the toilet a couple of years ago. Uh, hmm. This year, kind of the one that fills that role for me is my number nine, and that is Soviet Kitchen. What? Soviet Kitchen. <laughs> did I skip that? Um, well, maybe. Uh, if, if you looked at the artwork, you probably did. Um, 
So Soviet Kitchen is an app, hmm. uh, a, a sort of a it's it's a card game, and you use an app, and you're supposed to be making recipes that kind of resemble the right color and that aren't too toxic, uh, because because you're using you know there's not very good food left, and you're just using what's there and trying to make the best dishes you can, and the closer you get it to the right color, uh, and the less toxic it is, the more money you'll make. And you're just trying to make a lot, make as much money as you can before everybody dies from the bad food. Uh, and apparently, you're going to scan the cards into this app, and and you you play them. It's cooperative, and you're working together, but you're not taught, you're not showing each other the cards, and you're just trying to make dishes that look like they're supposed to. Hmm. So that's uh, that's my number nine, Soviet Kitchen. <laughs> yeah. It says here it's it also includes the campaign mode. In yes, which you does. start as a cooking unit at the very last days of war. <laughs> yeah, you can start at the end of World War II. And yeah, then I you finally that. cook for the Kremlin society. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so it, oh it definitely looks interesting. I know oh nothing God. about it other than, other than the description. Yeah. But that's the kind of game that I usually get excited about is something that's just a little bit different. <laughs> um, and so... Uh, looks, I, mean, I mean, it's, it's funny. It looks funny at least, yeah. All right, I'm going to enter both of mine so far into the chat because it was a good idea. Yeah. There's key flow. Oops. Good. But anyway, uh, that was your number nine Soviet kitchen. No, it won't let me. Never mind. That's too okay. So my number eight is, and that, now that's that's something weird because I'm not into this company's games except, you know, Orleans was published uh, by not the TMG, but DLP games at first. Yes. I like their games. I think there was the uh, was Altiplano as well. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, one of the best games of last year. And it's expansions coming out at Essen this year. I've already ordered it. I don't care. Um, <laughs> anyway, the thing about the uh, Manitoba, or I didn't tell the name, it's Manitoba. Something like that. Mm -hmm. So Manitoba is uh, a Euro game where it's there's not much information. I didn't find much information about the game. Basically, you are there's like that hunting season and that theme of the Native Americans and so on. And yeah, I really like the theme. I like the tribal theme uh, very much. Usually, I, I like the looks of uh, like you're putting stones on top of each other and so on probably has some kind of a worker placement as I look into that. And you're going to hunting grounds. You need to plan uh, how well you're going to make those resources and so on and how well you're going to do in the game. So, yeah, so probably a lot of that resource management, maybe worker placement. It doesn't say any of the mechanics right now. But I like the theme and kind of the description. So, yeah, yeah. money top up. I, I'm looking I, I, that one made my short list. Uh, I looked at I, I looked at they had a blurb on it on Board Game Geek about a month ago, where they talked about it a little bit. It looked interesting. I mean, I like that one we played at Gen Con, that Wendake, Wendake, however you say it, Wendake. which is also sort of this you know Indian theme. And I, I think this one looks interesting enough, so I would be interested in trying it. Yeah. Vindake was maybe this one will be like more of a like <laughs> I don't know this is a Euro game so I'm not looking into much theme but maybe it will have a little bit more theme than Vindake and will be more exciting I don't know I, I, I don't think the two are related all, at all except I mean like the theme, about, the theme about you know Indian tribal societies I, I I think I think the game I'm sure are very different so yeah yeah <laughs> I'm sure of that as well so yeah. that but that's my number eight okay. Well, my number eight, continuing sort of the theme of strange games, this is okay. one that I saw sort of on a video a while ago, and I got excited about it, and that is uh, Concerto. And this is one where you have a little conductor's baton, and you're conducting pieces of music, and you have to memorize the gestures and, <laughs> and huh. conduct your pieces of music with the fewest mistakes, and you know your, your audience will clap for you when you do well or boo when you do poorly. And yeah. from what I can tell, it has a whole bunch of different music. And it's not just all classical stuff. You've also got stuff like the Rocky Horror Picture Show and uh, 
<laughs> more modern, I guess, if we can say it, music. So it just looks really interesting. You, it's just a different thing. We don't have very many games about waving a conductor's baton. Or about so, music as a whole. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited to try that one. That's my number eight is Concerto. I've seen that um, was in one of the Tom's unboxing videos on Dice Tower. Maybe. Yeah, it yeah, could yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. I it's... know I saw it somewhere too, but it looks it looks like a fun game. It looks like a game I might be able to play with my kids because yeah. at, at church we try and teach them leading music anyway, so that they can help out. That, that might so, be fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it will be, and so that's why I'm excited about it, and that's why it's my number eight. Yeah, the only thing it looks horrible. Well, it doesn't look great, but I think you're paying more for the idea here than yeah, probably than necessarily. I mean, what is it going to be? It's just a conductor's baton and some music. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sounds interesting at least. Yeah, it does. So let's go further to number seven. My number seven is Pandoria, and this is like um, it's also about like territory building and area control and worker placement and tile placement and so on. So you're discovering those different tiles and then you are placing the uh, your people on those tiles and based on probably the majority as in the stands or maybe not, I don't know, but then you get the resources based on where you put your workers and they're using your and then you are using your uh, resources uh, to um, buildings and then you're mining for gold as well to get or maybe the gold is, is, is the only resource i don't know much about the game but you're basically then building buildings and uh, getting spells and you're trying to get uh, the most prestige which basically the most points but That's i like five. yeah it says it says uh the there's the streamlined beginner game and there's the uh, asymmetrical player powers as well and I like tile placement usually. Uh, it's, um, I also, I don't know, it's just putting all the workers, getting resources, exchanging them to, to or, or using them like as economy, as, as a resource, economy resource to build buildings. That's usually my thing. That's why I'm interested in this one. The cover looks amazing. So maybe it's a great game. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. At least the cover is amazing. I mean, it's truly, really, really cool. So that's Pandoria, my number seven. All right. I don't know much about that one, but I think, again, that's going to be a theme here. Um, <laughs> my, my number seven is uh, the next in a series of games, and it's a series I've enjoyed, although I've generally not known the history behind them. But this one I kind of do. Uh, this is a game called Pax Emancipation. Uh, it's sort of, it's from Phil Eklund. Uh, he designs some heavier games that are, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. you, there's, uh, there, I, 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 there, there was Pax Premier, there was Pax Renaissance, there was, uh, oh, the one about Mexico that I, it's on the tip of my tongue right now. Um, <laughs> it's uh, Porfiriana, Pax Porfiriana. Um, it, this one is about the emancipation or ab abolition of slavery, not just in the U.S. It looks like it's sort of a, a worldwide type thing. It looks like this one's cooperative, which the other ones I don't think have been. Uh, it looks like, but it's sort of a, I'm assuming it's kind of a tableau building game based on what I know about the others. And it's, it, it's a, a theme that I think will be interesting because I'll know more about it than I have about the others. I mean, Pax Pamir was in uh, Afghanistan, and I just didn't know the mm. history behind it. So it was it was it was a little bit less exciting for me. Pax Pamiriana. I mean, I know where Mexico is, obviously, but I don't know much about Mexican history either. Uh, whereas, sort of this Age of Enlightenment, uh, slavery, Age of Reason type of a, a thing is something that I think I'll, I'll find more enjoyment in. So. That's uh, that's one I'm excited to try. I always like them. Usually they're a little. The rule books are very difficult to get through, and sometimes the games are a little bit oh. murky. Yeah, but, uh, it's and, very and they never scientific. Look great. Well, some of them were. I mean, BIOS Genesis was scientific, and uh, I mean, Megafauna was, was scientific. But 
sometimes there, I mean, there's a lot of historical details in there, but the rules are sometimes written more like an engineering manual than yeah. like a game book. Um, <laughs> and the rule, and you know, it's, and they don't look great. It's, it's so, so sometimes they may not have the, the shelf staple of power, but you can see even behind me, I've got several of them up, up there. So I, I always like these games and I'm looking forward to this one as well. Axe Emancipation. Yeah. I tried to play Greenland a long time ago, <laughs> but the rule I like Greenland. Such a terrible thing. Um but then they they came out with um new editions with uh cleaned uh cleaned up uh, cards and, and you know the the whole a uh, little cleaner graf graphical layout to see. Yeah, it, it, it gets better. It's one of those ones it's kinda like you like 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 the new iPhone, wait until an update or two has come out before you buy it because usually the second or third edition ends up being the best one from him and he sort of fixes lots of the of yeah. the stuff that's wrong with it. I love Greenland and I love Neanderthal. Is that what it's called? The the other one? I'm turning around because it's up here somewhere. Yeah, Neanderthal. Those two I those two are probably my favorites from him. But um, yeah, this one looks great too. So not for everyone for sure, but Definitely. It might be something interesting. Um, I really want to try one of these games, uh, but I cannot. I know where you can. Hours. Yeah, good, good. Maybe I can bring we'll one play on the that cruise. game. Maybe <laughs> we'll that game uh, on the cruise or something like that. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, let's go to number six. Uh, my number six is economic game, by the way, and it's called Smartphone incorporated so you are a ceo of uh, a smartphone producing company so you talked about the apple phones and like yes you're in theme so oh. i i don't know just basically the theme where you like there are themes where you produce cars but now it's a theme about producing smartphones and that's really cool i i, I don't know i just like the, the whole idea of that theme you're planning, you're pricing things, and then you go into the development, and then you go into research to get new technologies into your phones, and then you are uh, doing production, and then you sell and get money eventually. You can, if you go with the low price, you probably can sell more, but eventually maybe you will not get as much money. You know, depends on what others play, what other players do, or something like that, what other companies do. So it sounds like a simulation of uh doing a company and smartphones i don't know it just sounds really really cool and that's my number uh, six smartphone incorporated yeah I, I think i skipped right by that one just because of the title but uh, but hopefully it's great i'm i'm always looking forward to surprise things but it sounds really cool I don't know. It's yeah, just... the, the the description does. I just I you know I went through. I I looked all at the pictures and the titles, and that's one that I know I skipped by. But um, yeah, maybe it's great. Yeah, sadly, um, there aren't any. Uh, I mean, like so they, there aren't any. Rule, I mean, the pictures available. Yeah, you know that so you can look into that. So yeah. Well, and maybe it's is is it there for sale or is it just there for demo? Uh, I don't know. It's it was for sale. Mm. I well, didn't really also... write down the demo things, so because yeah. I was um... well, and sometimes that's a lie, though. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah, sometimes it just no. But the thing is that sometimes they they want to get it done by Essen, and then boom, no. it doesn't. Yeah. All right. Well, my number six is a is a sequel to a game that I really enjoy. Uh, this is Claim Two. And it is, of course, a sequel to Claim, just regular Claim. Have you played Claim? It's a two-player trick-taking game. Um, I, uh, there's, you know, there's a couple of those out now. There's Fox in the Forest, which is okay, but Claim is really good. You sort of have your, you, you play it in two in two phases. The first phase, your building, you know, the, the cards you win will become your deck for the second, your hand for the second uh, phase of the game. And then the second phase of the game is the one where you're trying to, to score the, the majorities of the different uh, suits, which are different fanciful okay. creatures. 
And Claim 2 is just more of the same. It looks like it's a standalone sequel. It's got uh, five different uh, factions in it. Each, each faction has its own special ability in Claim. And so I'm assuming that each faction will have its own special ability here. And I, I play, I've played a lot of Claim because it, it's very small. I can take it with me places if I'm traveling. It works great with two and no other number. And mm-hmm. most people have quite enjoyed it. And so I've, I've gotten a lot of play out of it, and I'm sure I'll get a lot of play out of Claim 2. Yeah, it looks nice. I mean, the, the art looks really cool. The art oh, it's Mihailo Mitrievsky. Okay, yeah. That's and why it's, it's cool. It's, it's, just, it's, it's a good game, and it's, it's small and usually pretty cheap. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Claim 2. And there's some other piece of Claim that's coming out as well. Some sort of like Claim, I forget what it was, but it looks like more of a board game. Um, mm-hmm. I, I can't put my, ha- my hand on it right now. Maybe it's on my list here. But <laughs> that is, I was interested uh... in, but I'm Claim Kingdoms. So okay. I, I, don't, I don't know about that one yet, but Claim 2 is the one that made me. No, nothing about it. So... Yeah. It says, the king is dead. What happened? He is. Nobody really knows. <laughs> but he was found face down in a wine barrel this morning. <laughs> well. Uh, <laughs> like okay. Yeah, the, I mean, the theme doesn't come through at all. It's just a trick-taking game. But it yeah. is. But it, it's a good one. And it's, it's, it, if you were to make me list my favorite trick-taking games, it would definitely be in the top three. So. Okay. So let's go to number five. Okay, I'm ready for number five. My number five is Nemeton. Um, it's a game about druids, and there are different phases like a day, a dawn, was it dawn, dusk, at night, dawn, day, and dusk. So you're doing, you're going through different phases. Um, you summon, it's it, you summon whatever the plants or essences and summon the forest things and then uh, basically it's like a tile placement the modular boards you're placing those tiles and during the other phase you are revealing those tiles and you're going through the path during yet another phase or something like that so it's like a living life of a druid trying to kind of build up the forest and then go through that forest uh, and whatever, use your sacred uh, animals, companions, and yeah, and then, you know, enrich the forest, something like that. I, it's it's really hard to explain it because I don't really get it as well, <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. But yeah, it says here, it's it's all like, it's exploration, it's module board and tile placement. So I, and I like the whole feel of the theme. Where you know you, you put those tiles down and you have those different faces, kind of feels thematic. You're trying to enrich the forest because you're druids and you're paying your deeds and you're like you know building up things and so on. So yeah, you're getting points. Eventually, the whoever has the most points will win the game. That's there. Um, <laughs> but it okay. looks nice. It looks interesting. Nemeton. The box cover <laughs> looks uh, really, you know. Fairy tale ish, if you can say that word. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I put a <laughs> yeah. So anyway, never right. my number I, five. Again, I uh, I know nothing about it. I I hope it's great. The the art, I mean, it does look good. So I've been kind of looking at it as you've been talking. I don't like the player sheets. They look boring. But no. uh, the tiles themselves, I I'm, like. It has those. I don't know if it's a prototype. Three days probably. But it has those trees. Maybe they will have those cardboard trees there as well. So you can uh, maybe, huh. yeah. You can become. Uh, by the way, you can become kind of a a, a bird. And you can fly through tiles, and you can kind of you choose whether you go st- straight uh, down the straight path, which is like probably less resourceful. You can say that word. <laughs> what I mean, like, it gives you maybe probably less resources or less benefits, but you can go straight or you can get into more obstacles, but you go through more, you know, curvy path and then get more yeah. or something. So that's that. That, as well, that, one, so. that one sounds interesting. I, I hadn't picked up on it, but that's one that looks interesting to me too. Yep. Hmm. Anyway, 
All right. So far, all of mine have been relatively small releases. My number five is, I think, probably a big release, and that is Teotihuacan, City of Gods. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce that, but that's how it's spelled. Um, <laughs> it's it's uh, the um, Mayan. Uh, it's it's it the series of Mayan games. This is, uh, uh, it, 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 it looks, it's by the same designers as Tolkien. It's kind of set in the same area as Tolkien, uh, except it doesn't look like Tolkien at all. You know, you don't have the big fancy gear. Instead, you've got this wooden pyramid you're building in the middle. And it's a lot, I mean, it looks like that sort of a Euro type action selection. You move your worker around each round and take, take your action of choices and the board is growing and bonuses are growing. And I love, I mean, you know, this, this group, uh, I, I, I think, well, I guess maybe it's not designed by the same, it's by one of the designers of, uh, of Tolkien and then David uh, Tur uh, Turzi, who's this, uh, who did, uh, what did he do? He's done lots of stuff. I think he did, did he do that um, magician one that you like? I know he did, I think he did Anachrony. He's done a lot of great games that I've liked, so. They, they um, don't you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, I, I mean, it, it, it's a good design team, and it looks, I mean, the game looks good. The board looks kind of busy. Uh, looks like it has a million things going on. But from what I've heard, it's, it's fairly simple to grasp once you, once you get through it. And it looks like this sort of a euro -y style game that I generally like, almost sort of Pulsar-like. Um, but I'm excited about it. And I, I think, you know, this, this is one that I think people are talking about. So this isn't a small, tiny game. I think this is going to be a pretty big hit. And yeah. I hope it'll not take too long getting over here. Yeah, I... So I skipped talking for a long time. I know time you did. You made a poor choice. Yeah, I was thinking about eventually playing this game. I don't know why, but I it just... You know, at some point I was like, hmm, maybe I should Talking get this game. Fantastic. Yeah, but yeah, it's an old game. It's, I don't know, it's just so hard to get to play older games. Older. Well, but it's a cool game. <laughs> if you're thinking uh, did, about did, didn't somebody at one of the Estonian board game camps, didn't, wasn't there a group that played it and they took 38 four second turns so that they could get a game in under half an hour and claim it was a filler? I remember at one of the Estonian game camps that I went to, one of one of the guys was talking about that. Yes, maybe I don't know. Yeah, they they, they had it timed so that they could get the whole game of Tolkien in in half an hour, <laughs> <laughs> so that it was a filler. Sounds weird, and, but I I don't remember that. No, I, I may, maybe maybe you weren't paying maybe you weren't paying attention to that, but I remember somebody okay. saying that. I mean, something like that really sticks out in your mind if if you hear it. So. Um, my my friend painted my Tolkien, and it looks great. Mm. And this, but the, you know, we're not talking about Tolkien here. We're talking about this new one, and the they new one looks like it'll be great. great as well. Great as well. Yeah, I, I don't want to say it again because I I, I don't know how to. <laughs> Teo Tihuacan, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's that game. It's that big pyramid game. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm I was kind of a little basic exciting about this excited about this game. Basically, it's NS game games who they do hit or miss basically. They, are they, they either hit big or miss really hard. <laughs> not miss really hard. I mean, some games are some mediocre. I mean, like, the prop... I mean, not not, not the Shadowscape. I'm not talking about that. And Mistfall? I haven't played Mistfall. I don't know. I, I don't care about these fantasy <laughs> things. Uh, but <laughs> they had their... Their similar... duds have been real duds for me. Yeah, but they had Simurg and... But Petter. their good games have been great. So... <laughs> And progress evolution technology was also nice. It was, but it, it was all their games kind of, at some point felt underdeveloped. You know, some mm -hmm. Kickstarter things that, and for example, oh yeah, I'm sorry, um, I forgot. There, yes, there are some real, real misses. I'm not like Shadowscape is fine, but 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 the um, the in the name of Odin, oh, it's such a terrible game. And <laughs> it's a good game, no, it's a terrible game. Uh, don't even argue with me. It's a terrible game, and nobody even it. remembers this game. Uh, so, um, so that's that's that. But I'm, I was I'm kind of maybe I'll play it. Maybe I'll play it because I'm interested in tribal themes, and I'm more into Euro games right now, even more. So who knows? 
but it looks um, it looks very dry it looks it looks very it's probably not as complicated as it looks yeah it i hope pornography not. you know I, I would love to have this kind of a give me beautiful euro games please more beautiful euro games you know something like how outleave looks like for something like that you know how um Ooh, I should even anachrony looks really cool it has mm -hmm. anachrony is very busy game lots of iconography lots of things <laughs> going on but it's much more appealing game than all of these because there, there isn't much artwork besides just you know symbols it looks like a prototype to me a little bit you know that's but that's me it anyway it is not as gorgeous for example as Tolkien was so but I think it's gonna be great and I I'm looking forward to it Teotihuacan. <laughs> yes. Anyway, let's go to number four. Let's go to number four. So my number four is another economy game. And I say hi to... Oh, Frank Liu is here. Frank, hello. Uh, in, in the chat. A friend of mine from Good. a publishing company. From a, oh. a good publishing company. So Absolutely. anyway, uh, my number four is. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want to clap? Too. <laughs> my number four is Pipeline. Now, this is a sim. Kind, it looks kind of like simulation of uh, the uh, you're like having the oil business, oil company, and you building those pipes, and you are basically driving the economy of that whole thing and on the, and the whole company and so, yeah you need to do the economy itself well the pricings and everything like that to sell your oil to various markets and then you still need to build those networks of uh, pipes and whatever it doesn't look like when i looked at this one the the box cover looks exciting it's from capstone games I love capstone stuff. This box cover does not look exciting, though. For me, at least, I like I like how it looks. <laughs> but I mean, okay. look at the look at the uh, the board itself, or everything, like the the other pictures. So the 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 whole setup thing. Yeah. If you look at that, it looks like a spreadsheet. Something like that. you know, it's like it does. <laughs> but probably I don't know why, but something like I really like. Recently, I started liking all those themes about the uh, the economy and having the companies and being a CEO and doing economy things. You know, just managing managing okay. things, managing a job, something like that. <laughs> kind of, but I mean, like it might be on the lighter <laughs> side. Capstone Games isn't that bad of a company, you know. I I, oh, I like Capstone. I haven't played their, their games aren't usually light. Their games are usually on the heavier side. Yeah, I haven't played the Wildcatters yet, but I'm really excited about Wildcatters. I really want to try it. This is a tangent. My friend, my, my friends have a one-year-old, and um, their their friend got the one-year-old a copy of Wildcatters for his birthday. Okay. <laughs> I have. I think the parents are going to play it. I uh, have nothing to say <laughs> because why? I mean, but okay. Well, so. I, I think it was more a gift for the parents. Yeah. But because uh, I don't think a one-year-old would enjoy that game. Um, <laughs> and, uh, no, I mean th this game. This game I would look at because I like most of the games Capstone puts out. Uh, by itself, it probably wouldn't have grabbed me. But then again, I mean, I, I I'm looking forward to what is that one that's coming out? Estates from them. I'm looking forward. I've I've enjoyed their coal mining games, uh, Rorschach and uh, Hospital Connect. I like Lignum. I like. Uh, I mean, I just like that they make games that I like. So I, I'm willing to give this one. Probably go into that economy games uh, thing mm -hmm. uh, category and then resource management, all of that. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm. I really want to. And this this theme and how it looks is very different. You're so build, you're building those networks of pipes. I don't know why, but probably once you get into that game. It doesn't look exciting, but once you get into the game, you forget about how it looks and you start looking at how can I connect those and these and these and blah, 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 and so on yeah. those pipes in order to get yeah. whatever I want, you know. And mm -hmm. then you start looking at the, for example, stockpile is something that didn't look that exciting to me when I looked at this one. But once I played it the first time, I was like, 
oh, that's really cool. And then I played the game. It was like amazing. And now it's in my top 10 of all time. Yeah, I love Stockpile and the Reckoners is even better. So, <laughs> but uh, from that company. Anyway, that, that's not relevant to our list. <laughs> but um, all right. My number four is one that I tried at Gen Con, but it wasn't really there. It was only in prototype form at Gen Con, so it sort of slipped its way onto my list. This is sort of a re-implementation of a game that I capital L love. This is Monolith Arena from Portal Games. Oh, and it's really a re-implementation of Nirishima Hex. Yeah, I heard And that. Uh, basically, it's like Nirishima Hex. If you like Nirishima Hex, you'll probably like this one. And if you don't like it, you probably won't like this one. But the big difference is that your base is three things. It's like this, this stack. And you've got the stack, and you put it out, and then sort of the mobile base oh. that gives you different mobility and you can sort of deploy it in different uh, arrangements, which if you understand Nirishima Hex, which is very much a game about where stuff is, um, that's that's going to be huge and it'll really change the game. I mean, I think my favorite... Yes. I, I, think, I think my favorite of the factions in original Nirishima Hex was the dancer because the bases could move. Um, and, and so I, I think that's just going to take it to a new level. So I'm excited for it. I've kind of already pre-ordered it because, uh, not kind of, I actually have. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that one kind of feels like a cheat, but it's not. it wasn't really out at Gen Con. So I'm slipping it on here. Yeah, it looks... And near the top. I mean, I like Nirishima Hex. It didn't stay in my collection eventually, but um, it's very confrontational, though. So that's the thing, and you need to yes. <laughs> you, you need to, you need to be in that game. So you need to play that game constantly in order to you know kind you of do. enjoy the game. It's kind of a game that's it, that uh, rewards you if you play it a lot. Yeah, because it's very it's just, process driven, right? If yeah. this happens before this, and if you don't know that, and if you miss one thing, then your whole game literally blows up. Not literally, that would be dangerous. But your your board position does. And so it's a game that really you have to pick and stay with. And maybe, you know, maybe Nirishima itself has too many expansions now for, for a new player to come in. Um, but this one will be sort of a new start, kind of a reboot. But with it doesn't look like, I mean, the way it was explained to me at Gen Con, it doesn't seem like the rules are that different. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going to be kind of more, it's going to be maybe Nirishima Hex 4.0 or something. Who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Monolith Arena. I would I would I would try it eventually. Maybe on the cruise. I'm going to be bringing a lot of games on the cruise, I guess. <laughs> but that's what the cruise is all about—just playing the games, um, and sometimes going out and eating. Ah, oh, well, eating, yes, playing and eating, eating yeah, pretty much. as much as playing or playing even more than eating. Maybe who knows? Anyway. <laughs> Let's go to number All three. Right. Yes. I got number three. my thoughts. My number three is a game from a designer and a company I, I usually like. And that designer, few, few games that kind of um, weren't as exciting to me. But that's uh, Passing Through Petra. Mm. It's the ancient theme. Which already clicks with me. Uh, it has worker placement and set collection, which is fine with me. And it says economic as well. So, yeah, I haven't looked too much into that. It looks really cool. Uh, it's Alex Kevern, the designer of Renegade Games. Uh, some of the Renegade Game Studios games weren't as exciting to me. Eventually, after I played them, of course, you can see some of my reviews. Uh, some people, but it's it was kind of a more miss for me than. Or quite a few other folks, hmm. but I'm still exciting, uh, excited about uh, new Renegade games releases. Not the IP based, like for example, Power Rangers. I hate. I mean, like, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't hate. Well, but I, I don't care. I mean, like, I don't, I don't care about that IP. But uh, passing through Petra sounds interesting. Looks interesting. Economy, worker placement, set collection, ancient theme. The package is great. Let's go with that. Yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I heard about this the first time on the Dice Tower show at Gen Con, 
when yeah. they had, you know, they had uh, some folks we from Renegade together. and yeah, we were. And, and that's, and so it, it was, it's been in my mind. I don't know that it's near the top of my list, but it's one that, I mean, it looked interesting when they showed it and they had sort of that, you know, tunnel thing that they've built that you're, you kind of move the stuff through. It looks interesting. Um, I, I don't know much more about it than that, but I'm certainly, certainly intrigued. Yeah. It's, um, it's the same designer who made, for example, Gold West, which is a great mm -hmm. game. Um, World's Fair, which is a very good game. So, and yeah. Sentient, Sentient, which was a pass awful. for me. <laughs> Very awful. You didn't oh, like it I as well? Game. I, I still have it here because I haven't been had time to get rid of it yet, but I hated that game. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't like I, I mean, like, for me, it was your, the, the problem was the abstract nature. So I'm hoping that this one has kind of a more juicy feel to it. So yeah. I hope so too. It looks it certainly looks good. Yeah. So looks better than Sentin. I guess that's where to start. Sentin was yeah, mediocre. Anyway, that's uh, my number three passing through Petra. All right. My number three is a roll and write game. It's the roll and write game that's coming out. And that is Railroad Inc. Oh yeah. And didn't it come out during Gen Con already? So they that. had a couple copies of Gen Con, but it wasn't real. They had a couple for demo, but you couldn't really buy it. Do you um, want to get the uh, Blazing Red or Deep Blue? I want to get both. Yeah. I want to get both. I think both have, each one has like its own little unique expansion pieces in there, like some expansion dice. And so I think, I think buying both will have, uh, oh, will really? have value. Uh, that's what mm. I've heard. I mean, I, I haven't played it, obviously. But I, I think they're different enough. And you know, worst case, I have some extra pads. Um, I I play a lot of these things. They work really well. They travel really well. Um, I this one looks great. I like uh, what's the other train ro roll and write game? Uh, there's a rolling steamroller. Steamroller. I like that one. Yeah. I like that one. But this one looks even better. Um, if you listen to the shut up and sit down, folks, they were talking about it. They talked about it about you know five times during their review of welcome to and said it was even better than welcome to and i love welcome to hmm. so uh this this just, this one just looks like it'll be great it looks like it'll be a hit for me and the people that i play with like this kind of game so i'm definitely excited about railroad railroading yeah, it looks and that's nice. i-n-k <laughs> yeah it's just like the railroad theme and it seems to be very simple i was thinking about that at some point but i'm I went away from from the roll and write games. I mean, like I'm I'm not excited about them that much anymore. But uh, why not? I would definitely try it if it's it's probably cheap. So maybe it's something yeah. I can play with my colleagues from work. Uh, yeah. But well, the, the thing the only... about these is they're e they're usually pretty fast. They're usually pretty easy, and they're usually mm -hmm. pretty small. So you can take them with you without having to you know carry a huge old game box. So I just I, I think I think this one's gonna be a hit for me. Yeah, the the only the only problem I had with some of the roll and write games, uh, they were fine, but for like a play or two, the problems I had usually is that it's kind of a you know solo play, but you you can also like um, play <laughs> What's wrong together. With that? Yeah, you can play together, but you're kind of playing like solo and stuff like that. So, for example, I really like Dice Stars. Dice Stars is my favorite roll and write game because it has that. It has a lot of that interaction of drafting dice from center. I really like all that aspects. And Sweet Stack was also a really cool game where you kind of a Tetris type and you are choosing cards for your opponents. But you know, so that's I, I like more of that style of games, but uh, roll and write games. But this one still, why not? I'll definitely yeah. try it. Yeah. Well, you probably will because I'll probably bring that one on the cruise with me. I usually oh I like to play those on airplanes. I, I was I was playing when I went to Eurovision, I must have played uh, what was that? Ganz schön clever. I must have played that one thirty times on the plane. And when I went back to Vegas a couple of weeks ago, I took uh, Welcome Two and just sort of played you know the solo version, obviously, because I was by myself. But they're they're nice and compact, and it works really well for that kind of a scenario where you don't have yeah. a lot of space but still want to play a game. 
All right. So let's go. That's my number three. Door. Yeah. Railroad Inc. Blazing Red or Deep Blue? Or both? Or both. So my number two. And now you you probably you you've probably guessed uh, my top picks. Probably. So what do you think is my number two? Just I know what your number one is. I, I, I your number two Maybe the expansion for Cyclades. Uh, what expansion? This uh, set expansion. Set expansion is for Kemet. Oh, that's right. I'm being stupid. Yeah, uh, I'm, and I wasn't excited but because then that like, wasn't it's the it. expansion I, that for some is reason I thought one versus all. Okay. I'm not into one versus all. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't know what your number two is. I know what your number one is. but What would be um, my number one? Well, we'll talk about it when we get to number one. Let's do number two. No, but but what would be my number one if it? I'm not going to say anything. Oh, your number one will be Treasure Island. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Number two. Let's let's go. Uh, let's go to my number two then first. My number two. <laughs> my number two is Treasure Island. Oh, that's <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> yeah, it's my number two. So. Um, Yes, you know that I'm super excited about the game, and I was waiting for that game mm -hmm. for two years already. But that's the thing. That's why it's my number two because I know about this game and I've played this game. I played the demo, early one, very early prototype. But mm -hmm. I mean, still, I kind of didn't want to put it on as my number one because it's not no. that it's predictable. It's <laughs> no, it's it's also not it. I. I would definitely buy this game. I, I'm really excited about this game, but I'm not anticipating it that much anymore. You know, it's like kind of, mm -hmm. I knew about it a long time ago. I played the prototype and I know I'm going to enjoy it. And I know I'm going to get it and so on. So kind of, you know, the anticipation isn't that big, but I'm still super excited to get the game. So Treasure Island, uh, this is a game, this is kind of a, like, it's an ad it's not an adventure game though, um, but it's so, some players and the game has probably changed a lot but uh, some of you are playing ex uh, explorers who are trying to find the treasure and um, one other player it's kind of a one versus all but in a different manner uh, one player is a prisoner he, he knows where the treasure is and he needs to give you the clues but sometimes he can lie about the clues so you kind of you know this kind of deduction and and um yeah, anticipation thing all going on over there, and you have those uh, dry, uh, dry eraser boards where you basically write or or draw your routes and your uh, search locations. I don't know how much have they changed everything, uh, but it's <laughs> in very artwork, and the idea is the same. So basically, you as explorers want to get, and you have those special abilities as well. Each each of you, so you want to get the treasure before. The prisoner escapes at some point when uh, the explorer explorers use too much time uh, then eventually the prisoner escapes and uh, then he can go after the treasure and if, if he gets the treasure he wins the game and there's a bluffing involved as well so a lot of that bluffing so yeah it's just adventurous kind of game with cool arts uh, cool theme uh, dry razor thing, a little bit unique. So, looking forward to really great looking Treasure Island. All right. So, what do you think my number two is? Um, you probably you, you weren't talking about um, the money Toba too much. Maybe you maybe you're looking forward mm -hmm. to money Toba. Mm -hmm. My number two was announced right after I made my list, <laughs> and it went straight know. to my number two. Because I don't this know is about Blackout it. Hong Kong. What? Blackout Hong Kong. It was just announced today. It's an Alexander Pfister game. Um, it's, I mean, there's not a whole lot. It's from Eggert Spiele. It's sort of, it, I mean, it just looks really interesting. I, I was sort of making my list, and then I got an email from Edgar Spiele that was talking about it. It's mm. um, you, you manage, you're changing your resources. You've got a network of specialists. I love his stuff. I loved uh, Great Western Trail. 
I love uh, Mombasa. I love, uh, what's that one? Uh, oh, my goods. I love, what's that one that you don't like that I do? The ship one. The ship one? Port, Port Royal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's I, I, it's okay. I, I like all his stuff. I, I I really liked all 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 his games. This one looks good. Look if you look at the pictures of it. I mean, it just came up, so there's not a whole lot out about it. But I just know I like this one. And I mean, whenever he when he does something, it goes on my list of of stuff to pay attention to because yeah, I've just really grown to like his designs. So, Blackout Hong Kong. Yeah. Um... Fister. Unfortunately, I can't say more about it because I don't know much about it. Yeah, but I'm really it excited. Got the news, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just for me, Fister. I I played the Port Royal. I played Isle of Sky. I think yes. Oh, I love Great. Isle of Sky. I, I didn't like <laughs> it. Right? It's expansions. I mean, it's second expansions coming out. I'm excited for that too. All those games uh, they have Clemens Franzart as well. Oh my god. This one doesn't. Oh, that's good. But still, anyway. And you and, and you and you refuse to play Great Western Trail with me. Um, yeah, I don't really. That's um, each time I, I still game. say yes to like. Let's say I, I'm not really into Uwe Rosenberg or Alexander Fister, and then I still say, okay, let's then try this one. Maybe this one will change my mind. And then I still get the same feeling, like no, these designers are just <laughs> aren't just for me. You know, it's. Yeah, it's Belt, it's Rosenberg, it's Fister. These are German type heroes, and they are boring, and they are dry. By German designers. And they are by <laughs> German designers. I don't, I, I don't like Germans. No, I don't know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. To, I, yeah. <laughs> we might kidding. have to try Great Western Trail again, or again. I mean, for the first time at some point. I, that one's just so good. So good. That's one of my go tos. Every time I'm looking for something to play, that's so just one many of the first ones cool that comes out to me. I know, and that's still one of my top ten. American and French heroes. I'm like, there's so many great I, games. I like a little bit of everything, but I really like his stuff, and so I'm I'm pretty sure I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna like Blackout Hong Kong, and that's just based on the designer. I mean, I, I know nothing more about it. Yeah. Although it does look good. I mean, it's it's it looks like the board is really black. <laughs> the, the thing with the Euro games and more dry Euro games is that, for example, Russian Railroads or First Class or even Empire's Age of Discovery, they have raised the bar so, so, you know, so high for me. Yeah. They're so juicy. Even the First Class and Russian Railroads, is, are, they are also dry, but they are kind of, you know, <laughs> they're just so cool. It's kind of a whole, a whole of that, you know, you kind of feel like an engine building. And then I have Scythe, which is kind of a thematic Euro game. So there are so many. I'm, I'm more into thematic things and the economic okay. things. Though I know that Great Western Trail has some economy, but yeah, I oh, I have enough. If if it well, we we've got a whole cruise to try those kinds of things. We'll see. <laughs> it's a low uh, a low risk thing. I'm gonna um, make you try Cosmo Genesis, for example. I need to do a review for that. Okay. It's a great game. Anyway, on to our number ones. Yes. So, um, my number one, and you should have guessed probably this one as well. I mean, I, I told you about all the different categories. If, if somebody listened to us uh, at the beginning, I told about different categories that I'm interested in recently, much more than any other category. So I, I said, well, I said adventure games, storytelling games, uh, unique games, economy games, and mm -hmm. escape room games. Okay. Is there some escape room game coming out? Yes. <laughs> okay. I, then I don't know what it is. So, yeah. All right. So, you don't know. Okay. So, it's from uh, Board and Dice. My friends from Board and Dice. Hello there. Um, it's Escape Tales, The Awakening. So, this game is, is it's an escape room game, but it's more like a storytelling escape room game. It says it has a, it's a card game uh, based escape room, but it says there is no limit to the time, but rather kind of a adventure, discovering and story and exploration. But okay. it still it has those puzzles and escape room feel to it, and choices and so on. 
<laughs> yeah, I didn't even know anything about this one, so that was not on my radar. <laughs> it looks amazing, and more than dice recently. I don't know. They they're doing well, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely recommend looking into this game. Uh, there's the um, new Deckscape coming, El Dorado. That one looks Deckscape. good. Yeah, but uh, Deckscape was okay for me compared yeah, to me Unlock, too. Exit, or Escape Room, the game. That doesn't have yeah. any scenario in Europe, but sadly. I'm, I might almost be over Escape Room games at this point. There have been just so many... And they're starting starting to feel kind of the same. I haven't played everything yet, but for me, I, although I'll still enjoy them, I think I might have reached my limit. Mm -hmm. I I, so, I love them. I love them. I mm -hmm. I don't I don't know where I'm gonna or when I'm gonna reach the my limit because I I got two new scenarios for exits: the mysterious museum and the sinister mansion. I haven't played the sinister mansion yet. Yep, I bought both of those. I mean, I, I still buy them and I still play them, but I just I don't know if I've reached my saturation point yet. Well, the coolest part, if if you don't play, um, I don't know, people a lot of people like to play solo, but that's where mm -hmm. probably kept my excitement even higher is that I play them with with somebody, up to four people basically. I I played cooperatively it's just not as frustrating if you don't get through the puzzle then somebody <laughs> else will probably get through the puzzle you know That's there true. are more people to to think about the puzzle i don't know it's just more exciting to cooperate in those games that was my excitement is bigger but this one it says you know it says the time doesn't really matter as i understand or something like that it, it says the real time here but maybe it's like yeah, it says focus on a story and exploration. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It just sounds really, really cool, and it's card based. Yeah. So maybe it will be reset, resetable. So. Maybe. I mean, v Victor's here now, and he saw a couple of new of the new escape room games. Uh, I think they were the ex the new exit ones, uh, and was asking about them. So I'm sure I'll be playing a couple of those in a couple of days. But um, yep. I didn't. I mean, I I saw I saw that one as I was going through, but I kind of blocked it out because I said, "Oh, that's just another escape game." So, um. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Escape anyway. Tales. Oh, I hope my it's number one. Yeah. All number right. one. My number one. Any guesses? Uh... I'll tell you. When I was making the list, this is the one that I knew would be my number one before I started the list. Oh my god, I, I don't even know. And no, it's not a Summoner Wars reboot. Uh, the the boldest? No. Uh, I was thinking about you. I, I was thinking about the Teotihuacan would be your number one. But yeah, it's not. Yeah, I mean, that, I knew that was an expansion. Too. No, this is, is the, a new game. It's not an expansion. It's not the Concordia Venus or something like that. No, I'm not even sure what that is. Coimbra? But, uh, I already have Coimbra. I played I it yesterday. Um, <laughs> no, you, you, might, you might not guess it. This is Holding On. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't it... Um, holding uh, On looks amazing. Wasn't it selling during Gen Con as well? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. At least not... I didn't see it. It's it, impossible it, to find. I don't think it's Trouble out Life yet. of Billy Kerr or something like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's the one. I, I mean, they might have had it at Gen Con, but I didn't see it. And it wasn't... It certainly wasn't a wide release. Um, this this looks. I mean, I like. I, I really enjoyed. Uh, what was that game last year? The the dating one, Fog of Love. This one looks almost kind of the same. It's not the same game at all, but it looks it's it's similar. It's cooperative, and you're going through this guy. You're sort of working on your relationships with him. He's a patient. He's had like a heart attack or something, and is dying. And you're trying to figure out his memories and put together a picture of his life. It's sort of a campaign game. You'll go from game to game and try and figure out different things. It, um, I mean, the artwork is kind of dreamy and weird and it sort of has a stark, almost, almost a time stories like aesthetic yeah. to it. You know, you've got sort of this, this white mm. board with sort of these tokens on it. So it doesn't look like, you know, the, the actual game pieces are all that amazing, but I think the story that you're going through is, is going to be really interesting and, and engaging and it's a theme, you know, that we don't really deal with a lot is sort of dealing with a person who's dying in a hospice. Um, mm. It just, it looks like the kind of game that I will really enjoy. And I have mm -hmm. some people that I know that will really enjoy it with me. And so, I mean, that, that was going to be my number one. And then the rest was all figuring out where it fell. So I'm really excited about holding on. Yeah, I kind of 
maybe because I saw it in in, in Gen Con. I thought it was in Gen Con, so I don't really like the theme. I mean, like, I'm <laughs> well. Nobody likes the theme. Um... It's like person dying, and you're trying to. So it's not. I don't kind of feel good with the theme, but um i like the whole it says the murder miss mi something like a mystery and cooperative play and it says worker placement here you have those yeah. scenarios and so on so yeah the, the to... worker placement is is not like you're normally thinking you're just you have so you have a certain number of nurses and you can assign them different shifts is really what it is but yeah i mean hmm it just uh yeah it, it looks really interesting i'm i'm definitely i, I want to I want to try it. I'm sure I want to try yeah. it. So maybe we'll try it during our <laughs> cruise. If I haven't already made it all the way through by then. Um, but, but I don't, I don't think it's... scenarios uh, are replayable. I, 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 yeah, it looks, it looks like they absolutely are, because you're just trying to find certain sets of memories. I mean, once you know the story, obviously the story is going to be the story, but I think you can replay the scenarios because you can fail or, or succeed based yeah. on what you're, yeah. what you're pulling out. Okay, so we yeah, why not? Seems to be cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's holding on, and that's it. We've gone through our long, long, long list. That's ten. Games. That's ten games. We talked about exactly ten games each, and no extras. Yes, exactly ten games. I didn't want to even do any honorable mentions or like that. But as oh, I told you, well, my my honorable mentions are all expansions. So. <laughs> Mine were some I, I don't remember. Whatever. Who cares? Oh wait, wait, no. just just I'm, just, I'm just... also really excited for uh Imperial Settlers Amazon. Oh yeah. <laughs> just give me a small moment. Let me see uh, what were my picks eventually. Oh, they just added the blackout uh Hong Kong to the no, list. To the list? Yeah. Yes. The English and German editions, 45 euros. The I think I like the English cool. edition. It does, so, and, the, and the artwork looks, looks good, and it's, it's, uh, it looks like it's really black. <laughs> if you see the picture. <laughs> so there is, oh, but by the way, there is Cerebria from Mind Clash Games, but I, I'm not kind of extremely excited about this one. I was looking at the Kickstarter when it was on Kickstarter, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's that. Uh, City Mine of Gears. Mine be coming from the Kickstarter soon. Mm. City of Gears. City of Gears. I also have through Kickstarter coming. Cusco. <laughs> it's the. Uh, I, that was on my on my short list. So mm -hmm. Cusco is seems to be. I don't know. It's it's in the series of those. Uh, the what was what they called the Tikal and so on. All those games. Oh, it's not. It's not one of the Mass trilogy. It's just from that. It's being reprinted by that company. Yeah, but I mean, kind of, they kind of try to. Get it into the same series of games with the new yeah. prints, right. kind of the same. So fertility, <laughs> but it was a little bit too busy. But it, it's it looks like an interesting tile placement game. And I also had the um, a planet from Blue Orange Games, which has this kind of a yeah. magnet and so on. But I don't know. It looks very how to say. Here's the thing. Childish. I I I think Planet looks cool. I think it might be fun. I think it'll work well. Um, it's compared a lot to photosynthesis, and I hated photosynthesis. I didn't. Feel, I looked at the review. I didn't feel like it's photosynthesis. It's. I mean, it, it looks great, but the game itself was just so not fun. And and I've it's 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 gone over like a ton of bricks each time I brought it out. And so that's why Planet maybe fell down a little bit for me because I'm worried that it might be one that looks great but i can't ever get played uh but i mean who doesn't like sticking stuff on a decahedron so maybe it'll be great yeah also there is the okay you the others one i don't care about but there's a new game from hunting blue by the way which is the uh lift off so okay. it's a race into space 50s and 60s so yeah, it, it looks <laughs> yeah the art looks a little bit like the uh, Fallout art, you know, the Pimp Boy art, mm -hmm. a little bit yeah. like that. So why not? I mean, like I like Hunting Look stuff, of course, you know. Yeah, you do. By the Carcassonne, but First Class and Railroad, 
And well, uh, from... the race to the Newfoundland was also really good. I liked it. Some people didn't like it. I mean, like more people. I haven't played it yet. But I still uh, like it. For me, for me, the the ones, the other ones I'm excited about are the expansions for Great Western Trail, Feast for Odin, Caverna, uh, the expansion for Imperial Settlers, the expansion for Wendak. Um, there's, uh, there's, there was some more too that I was excited for, but oh, cool runnings looks like it will be fun. Hmm. That's this, what we've got the ice cube, and you're just trying to destroy everybody else's ice cube by putting salt on it. it, it I think it's a reaper. I think the, what was the flip the table people did a game about uh, 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 an episode about that a couple of years ago. But this one is sort of a, a reprint. And the best expansion coming is, of course, the expansion for your favorite game, the best-looking game, Food Chain oh. Magnet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's send this episode now. Yes, <laughs> no, no, on, uh, on that note. Uh, he talked about quite a few games uh, that, oh, my God. You said that. Uh, that you don't like. Okay. But, <laughs> Well, if it makes you feel any better, the expansion for Food Chain Magnet deals with ketchup, so that'll leave a bad taste in your mouth anyway. Eat ketchup. <laughs> I mean, who, who? Like, so many great sauces out there, and then some people just eat ketchup. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> there you go. That's your choice, people out there. So, But anyway, yeah, that's the list. That's the episode um, of the Essence Spiel 2018. And our top 10. Mm -hmm. And thank yep. you for watching. And we see you yet another time in another, another time. Uh, probably a top three video next. Oh, are we going to do one of those finally? Yes. But all right. <laughs> this is coming up. So we thought about, I thought about doing a top 10 one Understood. instead of top, top three. But Understood. yeah, we're going to get up. Uh, and you need to get to more videos. As well, I'm, all right. People are waiting. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. So, thank you very much for watching. And we we'll see you another time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, uh, to the social medias like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. All the links are in the description below. So, yeah. See you then. I'm going to end this broadcast now. Three, two,